I'm sitting here at one of the most popular food cart pods in all of Portland, Oregon. People come to a place like this, they gather friends, great food, choices all the way from waffles to wood-fired pizza, smoothies, so many different things to choose from. How do you know what to choose? And sometimes you just want a, a, a good burger. One of the best burgers I ever had. Uh, this little restaurant, and, and on top of that burger, there was cheese, a fried egg, bacon. I mean, as they built that thing, it was piled so high you could hardly fit your mouth around it. But when you think about the perfect burger, a crazy good burger, an epic burger, what are those ingredients that go into that? And thinking about a burger, now think about ministry too. What are the ingredients that go into an epic ministry, a crazy good ministry, those things that are essential ingredients to make it good? In Sun Life's foundations training, that's exactly what we look at. Those foundational priorities that Jesus established with his ministry with his disciples so that they could be healthy and strong. When all of those essential ingredients come together in your ministry, oh you know, it's crazy good. Progress Church is celebrating 30 years of service. We are so excited to celebrate with you. Join us March 2024 as we celebrate God's faithfulness. He has been good. We appreciate our members. We will have an appreciation dinner on March the 8th, RSVP by February 1st. Celebrate and worship with us. We are having our anniversary concert on March the 9th. Tickets on sale now. Anniversary service is March the 10th at 10 a.m. On the evening of March the 10th, we will be honoring our pastors. We honor our church mothers. We honor our leaders. And we are investing and planning for the future, the youth and the children. The foundation of a solid church built on the solid rock. We welcome you to join with us and celebrate our anniversary.
hearts and mighty God into his courts with praise be thankful unto the Lord this morning we want to bless his name this morning for he is good amen the Lord is good and the Lord inhabits the praises of his people this morning so if you are his people and the sheep of this pastor just lift your hands this morning and begin to give the Lord thanks for his goodness thanks for health hallelujah thank him for keeping care and tender mercies this morning lord we give you all the praise all the glory and all the honor lord because it deserves it lord jesus you deserve it this morning you deserve all the praise you deserve all the worship lord god we give it on to you lord we wake up this morning god and we are in our right mind oh god we will clothe us in our right mind oh god i speak to our minds this morning hallelujah i pray this morning god that everyone's focus hallelujah will be driven to you this morning oh almighty god you are the one that mighty god that woke us up this morning i went to the hospital and see so many sick people with cancer dying hallelujah all kind of ailments this morning you're in his presence you can walk you can talk so lift them this morning and begin to give the lord a shout in this place this morning hallelujah somebody shout his praises this morning come on lift up the name of jesus i shouldn't have been the one this morning to coerce anyone to worship god but you would have come into his house this morning hallelujah in your right mind this morning you would have come this morning for no one to tell you what to do but you come this morning to lift up jesus in this place let god be glorified this morning hallelujah hallelujah somebody shot glory somebody shot glory this morning did you come here for a reason this morning did you get out of bed this morning to come here for one reason to praise god and to lift him up praise god in the sanctuary praise him in the permanent of his power praise him this morning because he's good praise him because he's mighty praise him because he's all together loved oh what a lovely god we serve this morning Of us have 
through this morning, but I come to infuse strength in you this morning. God is your strength. Come on, say it. God is my refuge. smile on your face and sing for Jesus. Whoa, he is able to save, able to keep, able to satisfy. My God is able, yes I know he's able, all of my needs he supplies. Stop! 
that's why I say God One more time, I love him. I, I love him so. I love the Lord. I love him so. I love you, Lord. I love him so. He's so good to me. Come on, somebody praise the Lord this morning. Praise him from your being this morning. Praise him from the intercessions of your heart. Praise him because he's good. Praise him because he's altogether lovely. How oh, we love you, Lord oh God. We love you this morning, Lord Jesus. We love you this morning, God. We love you and adore you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for everything, oh God. Thank you for everything that you brought us through. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. Thank you for your tender mercies. They are new every morning. And great is your faithfulness towards your people. We thank you, great Jehovah. We thank you, great Jehovah. We thank you, great Jehovah. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for guiding us. When we are weak, you make us strong. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Guide me, O the great Jehovah. Pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty. Just hold us this morning, Lord. We need you to hold us. Hold us, Lord. Hold us. Hold us. Hold us with your powerful hands. Hold us this morning. Hold us this morning. 
Each and every one of us need you to hold us, Lord. Everyone is going through their own situation, God. So that's why I ask you to guide us and hold us. This morning I pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah this morning. Just wave to him this morning. Just wave to him this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship and adore you, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. We thank you, God, for your covering up on our lands, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We're just a pilgrim to this land. Ah, oh, we need you, we need you, Jesus. Bread of heaven, we need you this morning. We need you, Lord Jesus. Feed us till we want no more. Feed us till we want no more, Lord. Feed us, Lord. Feed us, Lord. Feed us, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God, me, oh.
your praises to the Lord this morning. Give your praises to the Lord. To the Lord most high. Come on, raise your praises this morning. Lift them high in this place this morning. We praise you, oh God. We praise your holy name, Lord Jesus. We bless you, oh God. We bless you, God. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we have songs of praises in our heart to you, Lord. We have songs of praises. We will ever give to you, Lord Jesus. Our praises will never dry up, Lord. Lord, our praises will be always continue to be in our mouth. With my mouth will I be known. Your faithful next to all generations Lord one generation shall praise your name oh God they shall lift up your name and give you praise God they can worship you God and give you all the glory that you deserve you deserve the highest praise Lord we sing praises to your name God you have made us God you have made us God you have made us God Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you. Only you can make me glad, Jesus. Only you can make me glad. Only you make me glad, Jesus. I say of the Lord, you are my shield. You are everything to me this morning. You are everything, you are everything, you are everything to me. I will bless your name, I will bless your name.
worship him now just worship him now just worship him now give him all the praises and the glory he deserves it we sing praises to his name because he deserves it he deserves it this morning he's our shelter our rock our portion our very present help this morning in time of need he's always there come on bless him everybody bless him bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me oh we praise you Lord Yes, Lord, we call out of a praise out of a mouth. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, oh God. Glory to your precious name. Bless his name. Thank you, Jesus.
just now someone wanting to climb up it's a picture of Zacchaeus climbing up into the sycamore tree someone has that purpose in their heart revelation for come up and I will show you great and mighty things, says God. So even as you desire to climb up so that you can see me, I desire to see you, says the Lord. I see your faithfulness. I see the groundwork that you are putting in to take yourself into a higher place and the Lord wants you to understand this morning that he has seen you he has seen you 
this morning you want to take your vision you want to take your prospect into a greater level as bishop has been preaching on the value of ourselves someone is taking that step this morning if it's you God wants you to know this morning that he is right beside you to raise you and to lift you up. It seems that nothing is happening. All around you seem as if it's stagnation. But the Lord wants you to know this morning, he said that God is going to arise you and propel you into the place that he has for you, says God. It is a higher place this morning. How many desire a higher place in him this morning? How many desire to come up from the place that you are this morning and go into the higher place this morning? Hallelujah, hallelujah. He wants you to understand that he sees your vision and he sees your heart's desire that you want to arise and come up in him. Hallelujah. And he's faithful to you this morning. Put your hands together for the Lord this morning. I sing praises to your name. you said in your word in Psalms 100 father we will make a joyful noise O God unto the land 
hallelujah we would serve you with gladness father we will come into your presence oh god with singing knowing that you are god hallelujah and father we pray even now that father as we gather in your house father i pray that you would prepare our hearts father we call forth the hosts of heaven oh god to encamp round about us this morning father we ask for your perfect will to be done in this house father that which you have promised oh god that which you have oh god promised to your people oh god for deliverance oh god for healing oh god for restoration even now in the name of jesus father we declare and decree oh god that your will shall be done in this house this morning oh god cause us to put self aside oh god and be led by your holy spirit oh god that father there would be testimonies oh god of your blessings there will be signs and there'll be wonders in your house this morning oh god father we thank you for everyone that is in this place and even for those that are on their way father i pray that father you would guide their steps and for those that are in this house father i pray that you prepare their hearts touch their hearts and their mind even now father we come against every distraction we come against every worry oh god everything that would cause them oh god uh, for their minds to be elsewhere god we pray even now that in this very moment oh god that you would bring them in alignment with you oh god yes, god. and that father their mind would be stayed on you oh god that father faith would arise in this house oh god and doubt will be removed even now in the name of jesus uh, that confidence oh god a god confidence would be wrought in your people this day oh god that father they would believe and know that you're able to do oh god the impossible oh god you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask think or imagine even now so father we stand in your presence we stand in your presence oh god we stand in all of you oh god and we say let your kingdom come let your will be done in this house even now in jesus name and all god's people say amen hallelujah we magnify you because you're so holy in this place oh God you are so righteous Lord you are so faithful you are so worthy Lord and we come to worship you God Oh, oh, oh. 
I heard a few spattered claps around. So I'm going to give you an opportunity at this time to praise. Amen. We just came out of worship. Can we give a, have a moment of praise? Can we put our hands together and praise the Lord? The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise He the Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. For you are awesome. You are wonderful. You are majestic. Hallelujah. Your ways are past finding out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can somebody say hallelujah? Somebody, somebody say hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give God praise and worship. Hallelujah. We magnify his name. We make his name bigger than everything that we're facing. Amen. Bigger than our circumstances. You know that if you magnify him, what you're saying is, God, whatever my problem is, I'm making you bigger than my problem. So when I make you bigger than my problem and I look at my problem now, I realize that my problem is small, actually smaller than I thought because you are a big God hallelujah 
Hallelujah. We got to change the mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God praise. Thank you so much, Judah, for leading us in a time of worship. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to just want, I take the time just to welcome each and every one of you in the, into your father's house. Amen. Put your hands together for being in your father's house this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have done well in coming out. Hallelujah. We just want to welcome each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Progress Church Online, we just want to take the time to welcome you and thank you so much for um, worshiping with us. At this time, for those that are online, I'm just going to ask you just to put in the chat where you're worshiping from. Hallelujah. Um, do we have any first-time visitors with us this morning? If this is your first time, I'm just ask you just to stand so we can acknowledge you. Hallelujah. If this is your first time, hallelujah. Someone close to him, just greet him. Let's greet them. Hallelujah. Over here, we have some first-time visitors. Amen. Hallelujah. They're a little bit shy to stand. It's okay. There's some people I haven't seen before seen some faces, um, but we want to welcome you to your father's house. Amen. Hallelujah. We, we've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Amen. We're so glad that you're here um, worshiping with us. Amen. It is an honor to have you as our guest for today. And we want to let you know that we're a worshiping church. Amen. We give God thanks. So if you, you want to take a moment to give God praise, nobody's going to look at you strange. If anything, we're going to join in with you. Amen. Because God has been so good. So good. Hallelujah. He's been so good to us. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to move into another phase of worship where we give of our tithes and our offering. Amen. But before we move into that space, I just want you to listen to this. The scripture that I'm going to read to you, hallelujah. Whenever we, we, we come to give of our tithes and our offering, we have to understand and know that it is, a, for many of us, it's a sacrifice, amen? If we're to be truthful, we, we know that it's a sacrifice. But the scripture also declares and shows us many areas of sacrifice. And we look at Abraham and he was bringing his son to sacrifice him, hallelujah. And listen to what it says. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay a hand on the lad, nor do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God. And since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me, then Abraham lift up his eyes to and looked, and there behold a ram caught in the thicket. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. Is God calling your name this morning to say, I've seen your sacrifice. I've seen the sacrifice. I've seen the, the balancing. Some people say, take from Peter, give it to Paul, so that you could pay them all. Or much more. So let us continue to be faithful. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask you just to pay attention to the screens. Hello, Progress Church family. It's time to be generous in our giving. Here are some of the ways that you can... Father, we're acknowledging that you are God. God, I know that you will make a way. Yes. Because, Father, you excel in the things that seem impossible. So, Father, this morning, we ask that you would touch your people, touch their faith. God, I pray that you would, oh, God, bless them even out. We pray for the joy of the Lord and the peace of God that pass it all human understanding to envelop them this morning. That, Father, as they stretch with their hands, Father, that their faith would be elevated, O oh God. That, Father, as you see their faith, O oh God, you said faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. But, Father, as you see their faith, that it would please you, O oh God. And that, Father, you would release, O oh God, unto your children that which has been carved out for them specially, O oh God. Father, break a rule if you have to even now. Father, that document that they're believing you for, we pray that if it's on the bottom, you would move it from the bottom to the top. 
Father, that money that is held up, Father, that seems like there is it's just going in circles. I pray, Father, that you would put a halt to it and that, Father, it would be released into the lives of your children even now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Father, we pray even now, God, that, Father, for those that you've blessed, oh God, I pray that you'd give them wisdom that they would be skillful with that which you've entrusted them with, oh God, and that, Father, they would be able to disseminate it, oh God, accurately, that, Father, your name would be glorified and that, Father, you would continue to replenish their lives, oh God. So, Father, we thank you for this opportunity to partner with you even now. Father, it's not the debt that we owe, oh God, but it's a seed that we're sowing into good ground even now. In Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Just follow the leading of the ushers. God bless you. that they would begin to see what you're showing them even now in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's people saying amen amen I'm just going to ask you just to pay attention to the screens hallelujah there's going to be a video and then after that we're going to have the speaker for this morning amen progress church is celebrating 
30 years of service. We are so excited to celebrate with you. Join us March 2024 as we celebrate God's faithfulness. He has been good. We appreciate our members. We will the youth and the children. The foundation of you to stand again. That's a change. Hallelujah. Let's welcome. Hallelujah. Let's welcome Pastor Esther as she comes to bring forth the word for today. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Amen and amen. Thank you. Good morning. We're still in mourning. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated for now. You may be seated. Hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord and see all the beautiful faces. Sorry I missed your baptism last week Sunday, but it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. God has good things in store for you. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Thank you for those online. We welcome you into your father's house. It's a place of victory, strength, and deliverance. Amen. Pastor is not here this morning, um, but he trusts me in the pulpit today. And thank God. Uh, when he asked me, I was just staring him in the face. And he was wondering, why she look at me like I'm asking something strange? But in my mind, I'm saying, God, is this my time? <laughs> Am I? And so we thank God for it. Hallelujah. I'm just going to pray over this word that the Lord has given me right now, and then we go into it. Father and God, we thank you for your faithfulness. The day that the Lord has placed in my heart is the value of trials. The value of trials. Now, trials is something that nobody wants. Amen? <laughs> if we can outrun it, we would. Well, I can tell you, nobody can outrun trouble. No matter where you go. But God has wisdom for us through the trials. And that's what God wants us. Ash or importance. It means holding something in high regard, such as friendship. But it can, be also, it can also mean determine how much on to verse 8. And for the woman ministry, I know we'll be doing the book of James um, sometime this year. So this is a good place to take notes. James chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 8. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brethren, count it all joy, not some joy, but all joy when you fall into various trials, mm. knowing that the testing of your faith produce patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to them, or to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Hallelujah. He is double-minded. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Thank you, Jesus. The value of trials. The value of trials. God wants you to know that the trials that you're going through, it has value. It has value for your life. Even though we don't like it, and right now, because he wants you to go through and be victorious, he's saying, I want you to understand this. 
Understand this from my perspective, God is saying. Trials has value. Say it again. I know, some people are saying it, but they're just... Mm, mm, mm. Yes, I understand. But I want you today, Father God, give your people understanding. Let us see from your perspective. Hallelujah. So why is James so important? Why is the book of James so important? But before that, let me give you some, some um, bits, bits about James. This letter, the book of James, was written by James, the brother of Jesus Christ. You'll find that in Matthew 13, 55. He's a leader of the Jerusalem, he was a leader of the, the Jerusalem church in Acts 18. It was probably written AD 40 to 45 to the Jewish Christians living outside Palestine. The theme of this letter is Christians must live out their faith. They should be doers, not just hearers of God's word. The purpose, James readers were suffering persecution and living in poverty. They were in social and spiritual conflict. Many believers were living in a worldly manner. James correct them and challenge them to seek God's wisdom to work out these problems. So why is James important? It is said that the book of James look a bit like the Old Testament book of Proverbs, dressed up in New Testament clothes. It consists consistent focus on practical action in the life of faith is reminiscent to the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, encouraging God's people to act like God's people. The pages of James are filled with direct command to, to pursue a life of holiness, to make no excuses for those who do not measure up. In the mind of, the, of this early church leader, Christian evidence, Christian evidence there, the context is key to understanding the meaning of this scripture. Verse three and verse four provide an explanation for what James is saying. He doesn't command believers to feel happy. That's a momentarily response when trial comes. He tells us to count it or consider it joyful. He is not talking about our immediate response, our emotional response to illness or to loss of loved ones. He was talking about how we could look at the bigger picture at that moment when assessing our spirit according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. When the Holy Spirit indwell a believer, the fruit is the product of the Holy Spirit cultivation of character in their heart. We don't have to feel happy. We don't have to feel happy <laughs> about the trials, but we must count it joy. We must count it what? There's a song, I don't know if it's in the sank, the Sankey, according to my grandmother, or the hymnal, but it says, I'm a glad pilgrim on my way, going to glory land. And as I sat there, as I, we stand in praise and worship, that song came back to me. I understand what James was talking about. He wasn't talking about emotions there. He was talking about that joy that only God could give us. That joy that comes from the union of us and the Holy Spirit. That yes, the trial is here, but we can embrace it and declare the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord. Count it joy. Count it all joy. I want you to tell someone beside you, be that witness to them. Tell them to count it all joy. 
we got to look at God's bigger picture. We have to look at God's bigger picture. Not on the, um, um, the immediate circumstances that we're going through. Joy that the box about is choosing to respond to external situations with inner contentment and satisfaction. Because we know that God will use these experiences to accomplish his work in and through our lives. In both the Old and the New Testament, the word joy means much the same in the English language. It means gladness, cheerfulness, calm delight. Now this morning when some of us came in and the songs were, were, were and, and Judah was leading us, we began to sing the songs and there was a joy that was coming. It did not say that you weren't going through anything, but you understand what joy meant. Joy meant you're looking at God's picture. Joy meant that you're not just staying in the situation and walla in it. You are looking at what God is saying and what God is about to do in you. Come on, tell somebody again, count it all joy. Count it all joy. The purpose of trials. So verse 2 said, consider, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. And verse 3 says, because you know that the testings of your faith produces perseverance. The testings of your faith is producing something in you. And it is specific. It is called perseverance. It is called endurance. If you never have, if you don't have perseverance, you will not make it in this journey. It's impossible to make it without perseverance. God knows what you need. So when the trial comes, it's God allowing it. I mean the trial, you might say, why would God use this? But he knows you have inside of you. And if you do not answer those questions accurately, you fail. Simple as that. So the trial is going to tell you what you are or who you are in Christ Jesus. It's going to tease or annoyances as we will call them in one's life. It often describes a difficult journey or experience that requires courage and resilience. Trial and tribulation signify endurance through difficult circumstances and hardship. Now temptation implies enticement. Trials or tests imply proving. The Greek word more commonly translated trial is dokim. It literally means proving, trial, approve, tried character, or proof. So the overall message of James is conveying to us right now that we need to look for the good that comes from difficult situation. Whether present by means, Satan, or by God. Whoever sends it, God's allow it. Are you listening to me? If Satan sent it, God allow it. Satan sent it to, to Job. God allow it. Are you understanding me now? Trials or temptation isn't typically fun and, in, and nobody enjoys them. But certainly when we persevere, the, the goal we pursue is well worth the price we pay for it. Hallelujah. 
We are pursuing gold. Did you know that? We are pursuing gold. It's not just to come to church and say, Lord, just solve my problem, solve my problem, solve my problem. That's not what he saved you for. Hallelujah. We need to talk about these things because we don't want to give you an idea, the idea that Christianity is a bed of rows. You just come and say, give me Lord, give me Lord, give me Lord. Oh, wow, wonderful. You, uh, just, just to come and just say hallelujah. You give me all this? No, this is not the God in whom we serve. So God wants us to embrace trials as a friend. Hmm. Embrace trials as a friend. Count it an opportunity for great joy. The benefit weighs, the benefit outweighs the means. I know you might be saying, right, it's easy for you to say, Pastor, but it is God's perspective. This is God's perspective, not mine, not man. The purpose of the trial, the purpose of the trial, consider it pure joy. Consider it pure joy because you know that the testing of your faith will produce perseverance. The trial we face is producing perseverance or endurance in our life. When we choose to trust God, he provides. Our endurance is the ability to keep trusting God while trial, trials continue unsolved. I'm sure many of us right now in this house and also online, there are things that you, you have before, put before the Lord, things in your life that is going on that you don't like, and it's unsolved. But you get up each morning and you raise your hand to God and said, I know my Redeemer lives. I know he is able. I know he's going to work it out. I know weeping endures only for a night. Comes. Hallelujah. It comes. It comes. Thank you. Without the weeping, there won't be the joy. Hallelujah. Yes, Father God. So verse 4 tells us to let's persevere. Let perseverance finish its work. This is your test. Embrace it like a friend. Embrace it. Hallelujah. That's how the, the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. And so I take it, I put the mask on myself and I give it to you as God has laid it on my heart. In mine. So perseverance is and see your way. Ask for wisdom. When you feel like giving up, ask for wisdom. Remember, you have a helper, the Holy Spirit, and you have the brethren to uphold you in prayer. Amen. He said, ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Not to get out of it, but ask for the wisdom in it. Hallelujah. Is God changing somebody's mind today about trials? Amen. Hallelujah. Ask for wisdom. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. The Apostle Paul, in his letter, encouraged believers to run the race with endurance, drawing on the metaphor of the athlete who remains committed to the course. That's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with 
with perseverance. Not just run the race, run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every trial that, you, that God allow brings you closer to him. Every trial is producing endurance for him. This is how necessary perseverance is. Without perseverance, there is no gener generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to him. Are you listening to what, what God's word saying? But when you ask, he must believe and not doubt. Because he who doubt is like the wave of the sea, blow and toss by the wind. When you're going through the trouble, God say ask. And he's going to give it to you. He's not going to say hold it. You haven't been faithful. Of wisdom from God above is God-given and God-centered discernment regarding the practical issues in life. Wisdom come from prayer for God's help. Do you hear that? Wisdom come from what? From prayer for, to God for God's help. God gives generously with single-minded liberality and without reproach. He does not want anyone to hesitate to come and ask him for wisdom. Wisdom word says ask. God's word says ask. We have an example of Solomon. Solomon was the king of Israel after his father David. From 2 Chronicles 1, from verse 10 to 12, it says, here is Solomon's prayer. The king of Israel went before God and he said, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead this people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, since this is your heart's desire and you have not asked for wealth, possession, or honor, nor for the death of your enemies, and since you have not asked for a long life, asked for long life, but for wisdom and knowledge to govern my people over whom I have made you king, Therefore, wisdom and knowledge will be given to you. And I will also give you wealth, possession, and honor, such as no king who, um, who was before you ever had, and none after. Hallelujah. Did God give Solomon the wisdom? What did Solomon do to get the wisdom? He asked. He asked God for the wisdom, and God gave him the wisdom. N <clears throat> Numbers 23, verse 19, the latter part says, Does he speak and not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? God always fulfill his promise. God is after the genuineness of your faith. God is after the genuineness of your faith. The purpose of the trials, the tests, is geared towards our faith in Christ Jesus, is to bring it to authenticity, the genuineness of it, the reason for your hope. The enemy of your soul, Satan, wants you to abandon your faith in Christ Jesus, to give up the hope during the test. Satan wants you to give up during the test. But God wants you to hold on to your faith. Let it be proven. Let it come forth like gold in his hand. God is for you. And he wants your faith to stand and withstand everything that comes in life. 
I'm sure most of you, or some of you are going through more difficulties than others. And we're not saying it doesn't matter. It does matter. But the greater the difficulty, it tells me that there's something in you that God wants to bring out. There's something in you that God wants you to stand in. It might take more difficulty in your life to get you to the, 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 the end result, to get you the crown of life. It might take somebody else less, but nevertheless, they still have to go through and to take them. What will it take you? I don't know. But what God allowing, count it joy. What God allowing in your life, count it joy. Don't pray it off. Pray it through. Come on, tell somebody, don't pray it off. Pray it through. Yes. Pray it through. There are times in my life, even as a younger believer, what I am now is what I, ha I did then. I had to pray through some hard times and cry through some hard times. But looking back, I see what he was doing. Going through it was not easy. There were times I took it so personally that I developed ulcer in my stomach. But thank God I'm delivered from that now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Do you know that the struggles that you go through and take it to heart produce illness in your body? Yes, yes it does. Yes, it does. It does. God don't want you to bear it. He said, cast it on me. Let my peace cover your heart and mind through this. He don't want you to die before your time through illnesses because you take on the stress of this world and try to figure it out on your own while he give you access to the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is ask. Ah, yeah. He said ask. The message is really simple, you know. Whatever the trouble that you're going through, he said, ask me for wisdom. I'm going to give you what you need to make you go through this. You're going to pass the test. He said, if you ask me for wisdom, you're going to pass the test. If you don't ask me for wisdom, you won't pass the test. Because the enemy will keep you in a circle till you're frustrated and some just give up the hope in them. And some just come to church and sit down and you can tell they're void of God's life in them. Hmm. So asking is so important. Ask God, ask God. So verse 2 continues to tell us, because we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. If you abandon your faith, Jesus, because if you abandon your faith in Jesus, because of the test, you are disqualified from the race. Did you know that? If you abandon your faith in Jesus Christ, you have just disqualified yourself from the race. He that come to me must believe that I am and a rewarder of them that diligently seek me. Without faith, it is impossible to please me, God said. So when you're void of faith, you're disqualifying yourself. The just shall live, they shall walk by faith. Every day of their life, 
We walk by faith, not just sometimes. If it's even to cry out, Lord, help my unbelief. At least we're crying for God's help in the situation. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And he will help you. Tell someone else, God is after the genuineness of your faith. So 1 Peter 1 verse 6 and 7 says, In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that, so that the proven genuineness of your faith of great worth than gold, which perish even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. God is after the genuineness. Satan is after your, the destruction of your faith. He don't want you to believe. First John ch chapter 5 verse 4 said, For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory we have overcome. This is the victory we have that overcomes the world, even our faith. What overcomes the world? Our faith in Jesus Christ. Our faith overcomes the world. I like the, living, um, the new living translation that says, for every child of God defeats this evil world. And we have, and we achieve this victory through our faith. Satan is after the destruction of your faith. But God is after the genuineness of your faith. The trials of various kinds that we go through brings our faith through to maturity and completeness. Luke 22 verse 33. 32, concerning Peter, Jesus says, I pray for you, Peter. I pray that your faith should not fail. He prayed that Peter's faith don't fail. Hebrews 12, verse 2, Jesus' example that he leave for us. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning the shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame for the joy that was set before him. He is our example today. Jesus looking beyond what he was going through in order to obtain the position he has today. He was willing to embrace the cross for joy that was coming. He was willing even when it cost him agony, even when he had to agonize in prayer. He was willing to do it because he knew the joy that was set before him. How do a person persevere under trials? God wants us to persevere and to walk this through. And there's five things that I want to give you that if you add this to your life, you will persevere, you will come forth you will receive the crown of joy that God promised to all his children, the, ground, the crown of life. Number one, ask God for? Wisdom. For wisdom. You got to ask. If you don't ask, you will not receive it. God knows that you need wisdom, but you have to ask him for it. <laughs> he knows. But he wants to work with your will. Ask me, he said, and I'll give it to you. So James, verse 1, verse 3. Number 2, 
consider the greater gain. Hebrews 10 verse 35, consider the greater gain. Number three, don't throw away your confidence, which is your faith in God. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 35 to 39. Number four, submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to God, James 4 verse 7. And number five, pray one for another. So vital. The Bible said pray one for another lest we become hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Pray one for another. Encourage one another. So if you walk out these five, these five principles that is in God's word, you're able to persevere to the end. And I'm going to read verse 35 to 39 of Hebrews and finish there. From verse 35 said, So do not throw away your confidence. It will be richly rewarded. You need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. For in this, just a little while, thank you, Jesus, he who is coming will come and will not delay. And but my righteous one will live by faith, and I take no pleasure in the one who shrinks back. But we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but to those who have faith and are saved. Hallelujah. We don't belong to those who shrink back, but we belong to those who take courage. We belong to those who stand the test. We belong to those who said, God is the way to life eternal. Did someone receive this morning from God's word? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Pastor Fabian is going to come in a second. But you are going through struggles right now. You don't have to be ashamed to say, I need God's wisdom. Those who want prayer, just come to the altar. Those online, all you have to do is to call out to God. And if you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we ask today that you will make Jesus your Lord and Savior. He said, any man come to him, he won't cast aside you have Jesus already as your advocate. All you have to do is to accept him as your Lord and Savior with a genuine heart and he will come in and be your God and he will lead you through the life troubles in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
confidence, amen? We have to believe in ourselves. I say confidence is like faith. It's a muscle. It has to be exercised. And you're going to have moments of ups and downs, but you've got to be confident in God that he's able, amen? Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask you just for a few more minutes of your time, amen? We have some announcements um, that we... Um, we have to make and then after we'll just pray and close off just some announcements for the youth and young adults um, please keep in mind that this Friday at 730 um, youth resumes um, so please ensure that you connect with um, Minister Jamal for that and also bring a friend out amen don't come alone I always say you don't want to go alone because who are you going to talk to about all the exciting things and reflect on right so bring someone with you also gospel skate legendary gospel skate at scooters we used to have a bk run collect connected with it but um so gospel skate is going to be on february 18th at 11 45 um, p.m so please connect with again brother jamal to minister jamal sorry to to arrange how transportations will go and everything and also change conference 2024 is going to be um live streamed right here um it's going to be on february 23rd um it's going to be live streamed here so please again connect with the youth and young adults um invite someone to come to be a part of that conference amen hallelujah at this time we're just going to have another announcement by um sister sandra let's put our hands together for her Hello, hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. I say afternoon now. We're just topping over to the afternoon. But uh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, events planning team to talk to you about the concert that we are having on March the 9th. Hello. March the 9th, March the 9th. Now, we just confirmed the artist, right? We just confirmed it. And we have a beautiful lineup, a wonderful lineup of ministers that are coming out to minister unto you on the 9th of March. We want every progress member, every guest, every friend, every family member to purchase a ticket. Actually, purchase two tickets, one for yourself and one for a guest. I'm holding 45 tickets in my hands today. 45. And I want those 45 tickets gone today. I'm starting with the leaders. I want the leaders to come and see me right after church and take your tickets from me today. My sweet Anne-Marie, I love you so much. And I have five for you, one for you. <laughs> One for Shanice and two for your family members plus a friend. So, <laughs> so, um, and I, I really, so just a reminder that the tickets are $30 for an adult admission and $15 for um, children 12 and under. Now, we spoke about, I spoke about the lineup. $30. Seniors, $30. <laughs> and Lydia, you're taking five tickets from me today. Um, so let me talk a little bit about the lineup for you. It took us a while to, to line up our artists because we wanted to make sure we bring you the best of the best. I want to start off with the best. The best is our very own praise and worship team, Judah. <laughs> Yes, Judah will be presenting, will be ministering to us on that day. She was born and raised in this church. She was born and raised in this church. She's a recording artist. And she will be with us also, Minister Kara Patrice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. She, she arranged her schedule. She arranged her schedule to be with us because you know she's a very busy woman very popular out there and wanted by many but she's put the time out to arrange her time to come and be with us so we are grateful to that so can you pass that on to her for us please minister pat we thank um minister Kriya, Kriya, Kara, Kara, kiara sorry kiara patrice to come out with us today on the march 9th um 
And then we have, those of you who know, Minister Osas. He will also be with us. And we have Minister Shirley, Patricia Shirley. Patricia Shirley, right? Patricia Shirley. So those are our artists that we'll be having on March the 9th. We want to pack out this place. We want to have about 150 people in here. We need your support. So come and get your tickets. Plus, they are available for you online. So those of you who want to purchase, you don't have to come to me today. You can go online. We sent out the link. Trishina Janelle here. We sent out the link. Those of you received the link. So we're expecting you to sign up. We only have two to three weeks before our big month is here of celebration. So I'm depending on you, family, to get it done so that we can have a wonderful time at the concert. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, that's a nice lineup. Amen. Um, let us all stand, amen, as we get ready to be dismissed. Um, this week, we want to also to keep um, Brother George um, in prayer. He will be traveling on Thursday, amen, to go back home just to celebrate the life of his late mom. So we want to keep, um, keep him and his family in prayer. And for anyone else who will be traveling, um, we want to cover you in prayer as well. Is there anyone else that's traveling? Anyone else? Okay. All right. Um, let us pray. Father, we thank you for all that has been said and done in your house. Father, we thank you for those that joined us online from near and far. We thank you for your blessings. And even now, Father, as um, your son, oh God, arranges to travel back home to celebrate the life of his mom. Father, I pray for the blessing of the Lord to be with him and his family. We pray for favor and grace over his life. Father, let this reflection on the lives and the life that she has lived and the many hearts that she has touched be one that is exciting, O oh God, and one that brings about joy in everyone that will participate in this grand occasion. Father, even for those in this house, Father, as we go throughout another week, we pray, Father, that you would order our steps, that you would cover us, bless us, O oh God, even for those online. God, I pray that you would protect. And Father, I pray that if it's according to your will for us to gather again in this fashion, God, that your will will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Progress Church Online, you're dismissed. Have a wonderful Sunday. For those in the house, I'm just going to ask.